Hello everyone, and welcome to our worship service this Sunday, which is the third Sunday after Epiphany on January 24th already. It's good to have you with us, whether you are on the live stream or you are be watching us on the recording or wherever you might find us on the, on the internet. We're so grateful that you've joined us today, and we hope that you have a good experience with this worship service. Uh, two things. The first is uh, the annual meeting for Trinity is February 14th. That's a Sunday at 10 o'clock, so immediately after this worship service. And uh, those of you who are congregation members will receive a lot of information in the next couple of days and, and into this week and next week. Um, we encourage you to review that information ahead of time because we're hoping to have as much of the business taken care of as we can ahead of time since we're doing this on Zoom uh, in a video format. The other is, because of the mitigations in Illinois we are, uh, that they have changed in our region, we will be uh, opening the building slowly to small groups starting February 1st. Uh, and then we'll uh, start to receive people, a small amount, uh, of people beginning on February 17th, which is Ash Wednesday. So that's that evening service, and then the Sundays following that. Of course, this is all contingent on how things go with uh, mitigations in our region and, of course, infection rates and such. Uh, but at least for now, we're planning that slow opening for the middle of February. So let's begin with our opening hymn, uh, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised. by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Our first reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. 
Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. This is the time of year when usually at least one news story breaks about how someone went off the road in somewhere in North Dakota or some other very cold place in Canada. And they were discovered two or three days later in a snowbank off of the road. And they're interviewed, and when, when they say, well, how did you survive? They say, well, I, I melted snow and drank that, and then I, I found some three-year-old corn chips from our last vacation under the passenger seat, and I, and I ate those. And those of us at home go, ew. But if you're in that car after the first day, and then maybe the second day, and you're thirsty, and you're hungry, and you're not sure what's going to happen, those three-year-old corn chips under the passenger seat are gold. And you're going to eat them slowly, and you're going to savor them. <laughs> and under normal circumstances, that would not be something you would choose if you were thirsty. You wouldn't wander out of your house and scoop up some snow and eat it. You'd simply go to the tap and turn it on. Three-year-old corn chips you'd just throw away. The difference is not necessarily just life and death. The difference is a sense of urgency. A sense that, well, I better make the best decisions now, not worry so much about the future. We found out through this election cycle also that I would say, while Americans didn't believe all the same things together, one thing that we agreed upon is that the record number of voters in this election was because of a sense of urgency. Supporters of each candidate felt like this was the moment. We'll, we'll worry about next year or the year after that, but this was the moment to either keep or get their candidate for president into office. Now, that sense of urgency came from different places, different issues, right? Every American had uh, something that they cared about that their particular candidate was speaking to. It could be the economy, it could be immigration, it could be Social Security, it could be all sorts of different things. We, we didn't agree on why we were voting for our candidate. But it was clear, not just up to the election, but in the week or so after that it took to sort things out, a sense of urgency on behalf of the country lie at the heart of many of these decisions. Now was the time. We don't know exactly, we never probably ever will. We don't know what prompted Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John to, as the gospel says, immediately leave their nets, leave their boats, and follow this Jesus. But there was something about Jesus that gave these four men a sense of urgency. A sense that not next week, not next month, not next year, but now 
was the time to follow Jesus. They probably didn't even know a whole lot about it. They probably didn't even know exactly where this whole thing was going to lead. But something told them that now was the right time. And it wasn't just these four. We know that there were other disciples after them. We know that there were people who followed Jesus, right? The feeding of the 5,000 story that we, that we know so well. Others, too, felt like there's something about this guy. And now is the time to check it out. Even after Jesus' death, Peter, this same Peter, when he was preaching to all of those people in the beginning of the book of Acts, they too were baptized on that day. On that very day. Jesus didn't just hand Peter and James and John and Andrew a card and said, hey, if you're interested, call me. No, there was something about him that was so compelling, so urgent, so captivating that it couldn't wait. And here we are as a congregation. You know, through COVID, you've been good. Really appreciate it. You've helped out with phone calls to members who you couldn't even see. <laughs> You've helped out gathering food for people that you didn't even know. Socks and boots and other things for children you probably haven't connected with. <laughs> Your giving has been steady to keep us going. You've managed to live all five of the T's, time, talent, treasure, testimony, and temple. You, you've managed to live all five through a crazy time. Because I think you understand that sense of urgency, that ministry doesn't stop. The gospel doesn't stop. And the promises of the cross don't end because we're in our homes or we're worshiping on a video camera. But we are still in that sense of urgency. COVID will end at some point, hopefully soon. But we cannot then retreat and say, well, we're in good shape. Let's coast for a while. We cannot, we cannot. We are in a time of urgency here, even in our congregation. We cannot afford to coast. We cannot afford to rest in, ev in every way. What does that look like? Well, it means that I need your help. I and the church council and the staff and other church leaders need your help. Because we are building a trinity for the future, but also the present. We are building a trinity that will address the needs and the hopes and the wants of the people who will be in these pews, of the people who are in this neighborhood. We want to partner with the people who God calls us to partner with for the good of the gospel and for the sake of the world. And that is urgent. Our environment needs us urgently. The hungry people in the world, the 12 million children in this country who will go to bed hungry, need us urgently. 
The children who could be within these walls and are, who need a Sunday school, a confirmation program, a youth group and beyond, we need that urgently. And as a result, we are not creating one trinity, we are creating many trinities under one roof and under one banner, that of Jesus Christ. And just like Americans voted on many, many different issues, so too do people connect to Trinity on many, many different issues. Urgently. You know, if you read the books about churches and growth and all that kind of stuff, they'll tell you, oh, be patient, take your time. Five, seven, ten years. I've never agreed with that. <laughs> because the gospel is always pushing us urgently now to live in this time, to live in this place. And to know, as the Bible reminds us, tomorrow's worries will be enough for tomorrow. <laughs> But today, we are building a congregation and continuing to build a congregation that has been strong, but to remain strong takes all of us. And finally, I want to say, when I mean all of us, I mean all of us. One of the things that we've discovered as we've looked at the budget this year is that people like me and younger we can do better. I'm 53. We can do better. We need to step up. Those older than us, our parents' generation and the like, can't carry this forever. And so whether it's time, talent, treasure, testimony, or temple, however you connect to Trinity, we need you now. There is a sense of urgency. Because Jesus came into this world and went to the cross and was raised from the dead. Not because God wanted to deal with the world in a century or two or more. Because God wanted to deal with the world now. And it's the same truth in Jesus' time as it is today. God is breaking into our world, pushing us, <laughs> and saying, folks, now is the time. And so I invite you to contact me or the staff, Pastor Peter at tlcmoline.org, with your ideas, with your thoughts, and with how you're going to vote for Trinity today. I know we can do it. I know we are doing it, but every day we have an opportunity to share the gospel now. Amen.
Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons, for musicians, and all those who serve, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who govern and lead this nation and nations around the world, may those who hold power understand that it is a trust from you, Lord, to be used not for personal glory or profit, but for the service of people. Grant in your mercy just and honest government and give us grace to live together in unity and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the world pandemic, let us work together to continue learning, encouraging, increasing vaccine recipients, wearing of masks, distancing physically, washing our hands, praying, making use of safe virtual worship practices, and practicing patience, and living forward toward a new normal. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And for all first responders, no matter what walk of life you come, your race, your language, your lot in life, no matter your medical title, housekeeper, receptionist, dietary aide, you will not know in this lifetime all you have done. May we never forget the work you do and the love you bring through human feelings, both grief and joy. You do what we alone could never do. And God, we give thanks for all these people that have graciously and selflessly shared their gifts. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And we pray for all who are in need of healing and for those who grieve this day, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy will surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And in thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Coming to the table, let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Let us pray. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you all very much for being here with us today. Share this with your friends and neighbors and your Facebook friends and, and whomever you think might like to see this. We're really glad to be providing this opportunity for you and we hope that others might benefit too. And so, as we always do, let's finish. Grow in God, care in Christ, serve in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs>